On the face of it, the idea of digging up the liquefied remains of dinosaurs to power our transportation fleet, well, it sounds like kind of an odd idea. Now, we're nowhere near running out of oil, but there aren't any more dinosaurs, so eventually we're going to have to come up with something else. Now, billions of dollars of research on battery-powered cars, well, frankly, it hasn't got us a whole lot farther than we were 100 years ago. But what if we had an energy source that was virtually limitless and could be produced by a combination of solar power and water? Well, if we run out of solar power and water, we're pretty much done anyway. So that seems like an area that's worth pursuing. And of course, we have that energy source. It's called hydrogen. Now, the two things standing in the way of hydrogen vehicles are getting the vehicles that run on hydrogen and getting the hydrogen to every street corner in the country. Well, we're at least partially on the way. This is the first hydrogen vehicle available to Canadians. Six of them are so far in private hands in Vancouver, and this is the first one to be delivered in the province of Ontario. Ironically, the gentleman that owns this vehicle works for a company that manufactures and distributes hydrogen. Let's hear what he has to say about the Hyundai Tucson fuel cell vehicle. Well, the issues that we've been having uh, with fuel cell vehicles or the arrival of fuel cell vehicles at least recently has been uh, sort of this chicken and egg scenario of automobile manufacturers wanting to deploy uh, their latest model of fuel cell vehicle in a jurisdiction. It is my hope that with the uh, arrival of Ontario's first fuel cell vehicle, that infrastructure really needs to sort of follow the, uh, the vehicle rollout if we look to see uh, zero emission fuel cell vehicles rolling on the streets of, of uh, Toronto. There was a deliberate strategy on the part of Hyundai to make this car feel as much like a regular car as it's possible to feel. About the only compromise is that the big tank, uh, which holds the hydrogen, takes up a little bit of the luggage space underneath the floor of the cargo area. Being an electric car powered by an electric motor, the torque is at its peak at zero RPM, so the acceleration from rest is pleasantly brisk, and there's also no vibration. It's funny that you don't even notice that there's vibration in a passenger car until you drive one that doesn't have any at all. Here we're looking at a Hydrogen X 30 kilowatt fuel cell module. A module like this would either be deployed on a bus, uh, it, could be it could be deployed on a stationary uh, generator producing power. Air that is delivered from a blower uh, enters the fuel cell here and hydrogen, the fuel, enters the fuel cell engine here um, and the hydrogen and the oxygen in the air uh, react at the uh, electrode level in the fuel cell to produce electricity. That electricity can then be used to turn the wheels of a bus uh, or a truck uh, or to put electricity back on the grid. Because the electricity for the electric motor doesn't come from a battery, there's no degradation in performance if the weather gets cold, which for Canada is obviously a huge advantage. I can totally follow uh, your point, Jim. Uh, that uh, uh, digging up uh, fermented uh, dinosaur bones, as you put it, uh, uh, makes sense today and we're doing it today. Uh, but surely we can, we can sort of follow the idea that using large amounts of solar and large amounts of wind and excess renewable energy tomorrow to make our transportation fuel doesn't sound all that crazy, does it? So there's the Hyundai Tucson fuel cell vehicle. It's quiet, it's clean, it's green, and it's as normal to drive as the day is long. And the exhaust emissions, pure water. For Motoring TV, I'm Jim Kenzie.